Hi everyone, and in today's video, I wanna show you how you can do astrophotography using Affinity Photo. Now, I've actually been working on a tutorial to how to do that, and then they released the 1.9 update, and now a lot of what I was gonna show you is actually built in, and that is the astrophotography stacker. So I've opened up Affinity here, and we're just gonna to go to File, and we go New Astrophotography Stack and it's gonna open up this page here. Now, what we basically need to do is just add the files. It is that simple. Now we have light files, bias, darks, dark flats, and flats. So you're going to want to collect as many of those things as possible and put them in the right category. And you also have different file groups. So there's one file group, two, three, four. So if you're doing multiple nights, each night's gonna have its own darks and flats. So this is a really powerful tool. And I'm gonna show you how to use this in the most simplistic way, since I actually currently don't take biases, darks, dark flats, or flats, because I'm lazy. Actually, it's because my camera is really good and therefore I don't need it, but lazy. I should be doing it, but lazy. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go light and we're gonna basically click add files. And it's gonna open up a folder that's gonna show us where the data is. And here I'm taking the picture of Andromeda that I've used before in a couple things, mainly because I want to keep it the same. And if I can hold down the shift key, select all the data, click open, and it's going to take a couple seconds to load in, and you're going to have all the light frames into the photos here. And there's all the stacking methods. I highly suggest Sigma clipping. This is useful to get rid of any sort of like star trails, satellite trails, um, meteorite strikes, or other little imperfections that are in there just gets rid of them and you can set the threshold and the clipping iterations. I've just left them as normal. Um, at some point I might play around with it a little bit longer to figure out what works best or worse, but I suspect that it's highly dependent on your photos, which is gonna be dependent on what filters and what type of sky conditions you have and what scope you're using. Um, then there's the raw options um, and you can basically pick inferred for most digital SLRs. However, if you are imaging with a astro camera or some other uh, more scientific grade cameras, you may have to indicate what the RGB setting is, or if you're shooting and you're imaging with monochrome, pick monochrome. The D mosaic method, again, bilinear default, just leave it default, and your white balance, just leave it at daylight. Um, generally, I find daylight works uh, the best. Um, obviously, you have a master flat and a camera option. If you're taking flats, it might be worthwhile doing that, um, but generally, I would say daylight works for most stuff. And that's it. That really is how simple this is. And then after you have all this information, you go and you hit stack. Don't hit apply, hit stack. And then it's going to stack the photos. Now, depending on how fast your computer is and processing power, etc., this is going to take a while. Uh, Affinity Photo is gonna use about 98% of your CPU power, so it's important that all other programs are probably turned off so that this will function as fast as possible. I do wanna make a comment that while we're waiting here, that it's actually stacking the photos, it's also doing alignment and everything else in the background. It doesn't tell you this, but that's what's necessary because I just threw a bunch of raw files in and I know that they are not perfectly aligned. Okay, so after waiting a while, um, you end up with this image here, which has now been stacked with the settings. So now you hit apply, so now that you've hit apply, you end up with this picture into sort of a regular affinity photo. And you can see here that you have the actual pixels, if I turn this off, that have been stacked together. It does a level correction for you, and you also have a curve correction that's done. The first thing you should do here is actually go and then save the photo. All right, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is crop the image. And the reason that you're gonna crop the image at this point is simply because a lot of the steps that you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna use as much of the photo as possible. Oh, come on. There we go. Awesome. So the next step I'm gonna do is crop the photo. Um, and if I needed to, I would also like rotate the photo and whatnot. So we're gonna get here, we're gonna hit crop, we're gonna hit apply, and there we go. And the next thing we're gonna do is make sure that we're selected on the pixel layer over here, is go to filters, go down to astrophotography and remove background. 
And I generally like to go, and I'm just going to click here, left and right. And basically, you drag this little point here to where you want the background. And sample radius, there we go. And we're going to pick a spot like that. And then you're going to go and try to pick a few spots around where you know it should be background. All right. All right, next thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to make some adjustments to this. This is going to affect how much of your background is going to disappear or show. You also have it up here in this, in this direction here. Or you can pick sample position. And at this point here, this is where you're going to want to make additional curve adjustments to the image. Good. And then you can always go back and we're going to further try to remove the background a little bit. Um, picking pretty much the darkest spot we can. Sample location. We can do here. Find a good spot that's brighter than it needs to be. There we go. Hit apply. And now we have the galaxy here at we can see. Now, part of the thing with this is that there's a lot of things that you can do with curves and levels. As I said, I'm not the most knowledgeable about um, Affinity Photo itself, but from a perspective of not trying to go too crazy, we can recolor the image, we can do an HLS adjustment. Uh, what else do we have? We can adjust the white balance, making it cool or warm if we want, depending on what you're looking for. There we go. Um, but you can see here that we have Andromeda Galaxy. It's come out pretty well. Now, one of the things I'd like to do is called StarNet. And in order to do StarNet, since it's not built into Finti Photo, I'm going to say yet, um, is that we have to save as, and we have to save it as, apparently I need to maybe hit save. Oh, there we go. What we need to do is we need to export it, and we need to export it as a TIFF. And ideally, we want to export it as a 16-bit TIFF, because that's what um, StarNet takes. And then we hit Export. And it really doesn't matter what the name is. We're going to hit Save. So I have StarNet++ here. Let's view this in large icons. So I took the, the TIFF file. I'm basically dragging and dropping it onto StarNet RGB. And it's basically going to uh, process that. And other than saying it's not configured a thousand times, it seems to be working. So StarNet basically removes the background from the image and it produces a starless image. You can also have it where you produce a star mask, but I generally, in this case, would just take a difference and then create the star mask separately. We're just waiting for it to finish processing. Again, this is one of these steps that takes a few minutes to go. Again, depending on how fast your computer is, but even with a powerful computer, expect to wait a bit. Which then produces this starless TIFF here, which we can drag up and it will go here. And you can see here, there are no stars. Now, if I take this image here and we're just gonna do this quickly and we paste it on top, what we want to do is actually pick the layers function here and we want to pick instead of normal, we want to pick difference. And this is our star mask that we will then save as a separate file. All right, so we're back here with the actual starless image. Now here's where we can actually go again with various adjustments, layers, etc., and adjust the image um, to what we want to make it look like. Okay, and then when we go up here, we can go to filters and we can do uh, an unsharp mask, which will allow us to actually um, improve the sharpness of the background galaxy. And this works for nebulas as well without destroying the stars. This is one of the best parts of doing a star mask because a lot of stars just go kablooey whenever you add sharpening to them. And then now that we've actually pulled out a lot more detail in Andromeda, we then go and we will open and hopefully I'll have it here. We go. Oh, want the star mask. Okay. 
and we'll take the star mass that we created before, put it on top, and then we'll go to layers and change it to add. Where is the add? Does it have add? There it is, add. And there we've added the stars back into the image and we've been able to pull out a lot more detail of and now we've actually gone and added the stars back into the image and we've pulled a lot more detail. Now, one of the things we can do if we wanna get really fancy though, is we can go to the star mask and we can actually go and colorize it. Uh, since we know that the, the stars are a particular color, there is a bit of color in here, but we're gonna adjust the white balance. We'll pick cool and we can basically, now obviously this is too extreme, but we can make it where we want the stars a little yellow or a little blue. There we go. And we just simply merge those together, merge visible, and we copy that. And we can actually st stack that on instead. That's add. And there we've added a bit of color into the image. And this I would say is going to be our final picture. So we're going to hit save. Um, and then wait for it to save. Affinity Photo takes a little while to save documents of this size. A little odd, but go with it. And we're gonna hit export. And we're gonna export it as a JPEG. We're gonna pick best quality. And bilinear is fine, quality 100%, whole document, good. And we're gonna hit export. And we're gonna export that to the page. And we're good to go. And this is what we end up with our end result. And it looks pretty good. So this is the conclusion of my quick little tutorial on Affinity Photo. Obviously there's a few other things that we could do with this photo that includes trying to improve the localized gradients, trying to remove a little bit more of the gradient across the image that we couldn't quite get with the background removal in Affinity Photo, and a few other little tweaks and settings that we could play with to try to get that better image. However, that's I'm going to have to save for another tutorial as I'm still trying to figure out how to do that exactly in Affinity Photo without having to jump into other software. So I hope that you did enjoy this tutorial and thank you for watching.